I'm so glad you're here. Let's start. Here we are. Oh my goodness. We did it. We made it. It's virtual Halston. And thank you all for, for watching. I know there's a lot of you out there watching. I'm so excited about it. Uh, because um, we can't do things live because we're in a pandemic. Global, global pandemic. So yeah, we're in my, uh, my house and I have my adult beverage. It's cocktail hour, guys. So please feel free to have a, an adult beverage. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm very excited to be here. You know, <clears throat> this is a very difficult time. So I think it's important to, to dress up, wear lashes, have an adult beverage, and we're going to laugh. So that's what this is all about. We just need a, oh, we need laughter, don't we? Um, and uh, I'm very, very excited to introduce you to my indefatigable, I had to practice saying that, my indefatigable producer. I think a lot of you know him. He's, of course, known for Birdland and the cast party. He's also working with Linda Lavin and Billy Stritch. And uh, uh, please, it's exhausting just thinking about all the things he's doing. But please welcome my producer, Jim Caruso. Where are you, Jim? <laughs> there you are, indefatigable. I, I don't think I can do this. I am, I've been <laughs> laughing now for a minute and a half nonstop. Julie Lynn, it's our premiere. It's our premiere. We're very excited. And apparently there we actually have an audience. People, people from the Broadway community, the, the uh, uh, pulmonary fibrosis community, which is what we're, we're, we're doing this for. So please feel free, people, to give tips to us so that, yes, there we are, Venmo and PayPal. This is for the um, uh, Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation, which, is, which many of you know is my charity. And Broadway Cares, by the way, Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, which a lot of you Broadway people know, uh, is one of my biggest patrons, and I'm very, very grateful to them. So, but we're going to have fun, aren't we? Julie, gonna this fun. is going to be so much fun. Uh, uh, now, to me, you are an essential worker. I think we, the Thank viewing you. public, need you and your take on all of this uh, to help ease the pain just it, a little bit. It is. It's awful. And, you know, people are getting a little a little crazy. You know, people are starting to go a little, you know, being, you know, know. cooped up and whatnot. So, but laughter really does help. And, you know, we also have help. We have that wonderful graphic. Isn't that adorable graphic? I love it. I love being reduced to a cartoon, actually, because <laughs> I look better. Um, at B.T. Whitehill, the genius who came up with that. And we also have a behind-the-scenes wizard. Uh, she's kind of like the Wizard of Oz, you know, who's pulling the strings? We have the wonderful Ruby Lochnar. Where is she? Ruby. Hello. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Ruby, now wait, where are you exactly? I'm quarantined in Nashville, Tennessee right now. Can you believe You're it? You're in Nashville. Oh my goodness, this is so fantastic. Well, there she is. She's our tech director and she's she's just young and talented and beautiful. And, and Goodbye, Ruby. <laughs> Goodbye. Hi. Yeah, yeah. She's too pretty. Enough of that. Yeah, Enough not for you. her. Not for her. Let's go she's right fantastic. Home. Julie, she is great. Uh, she's been doing my uh, pajama cast party with me. I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have known how to do it without her. She is so smooth. She, she is. is so great. I, and I've known her since she was six years old. Not even kidding. What? I didn't know this. What, what, yeah. How? how? Uh, her mom is a songwriter and a singer named uh, Victoria Shaw. Yes, I've who heard was, her mom. Who I booked at Birdland Forever and has been a cast party uh, uh, performer for years. And she used to bring her two little girls who were like six and four at the time. Ruby was the six-year-old and she would get up and sing with me. And she was hilarious and adorable even then. All but right. Now, and now she's, she's, now she's running America. <laughs> she is. She has actually, more shows than either of us. America. I really do wish she was running America. Now, um, darling, yeah. again, we're going to mention uh, we're doing this for the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. Yeah. Again, send some money to that tip jar if you can. We have to pay for the platform, uh, my eyelashes, and also for the <laughs> Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. And we're so grateful to you all. Um, Jim, the Tonys, the Tony Awards will not be on, will they? No, but the good news is we have a Grease sing-along, you guys. Have we not been through enough? 
Well, exactly. It's really you know, a grease sing along. A grease, yeah, grease is the word. Is it? <laughs> is it? Is grease well, the I, word? I never miss a Travolta musical. Yeah. Well, what? you know, I mean, look, I loved the movie. I knew the songs and of all course. that, but and but haven't we done it enough? Well, and have it. What if they ran a, a, a movie that had won a Tony once? What about that? Well, exactly. But here's but here's why I found out. I mean, maybe many people know this. CBS has the rights to Greece, so they didn't have to pay an exorbitant amount of money for the movie. Oh, so okay. But I still um, feel like they could have paid. Eric Bergen, a few hundred bucks and gotten the Sondheim birthday concert. No, he didn't yeah. do that one. The Rosie O'Donnell thing he did. Right. Broadway World with the Sondheim 90th birth, birthday yeah. concert. Something that the theater lovers would have I know, but really you know, enjoyed. unfortunately, darling, I think for the for most of people in America, particularly now, maybe theater might be like the ugly stepchild of the <laughs> entertainment business. No, I don't know. I don't feel it. that way. You don't feel that way, but I'm just saying. Now, listen, I was just reading today about um, Broadway babysitters. Have you heard about this? Yes. Yes, I guess apparently they have, I guess people need babysitters because, you know, they're working at home and the kids need to be entertained and they can do this virtually. I don't know. I don't know. What are they, what are they singing Les Mis or something? Broadway babysitters. I, I, I have not been called to be a babysitter and I, I don't know why. Well, I think that's an oversight. Mm. Can you imagine coming home from a hard day's work and your son is dressed as Cheeto Rivera? I don't need to see this. Uh, oh, see, I do. Cause if my I son don't... is dressed as Cheeto, <laughs> well... I would be cheering. I would be thrilled because I know that I was going to be taken care of <laughs> as an old lady. Yeah, right. you know. Your hair will look great. Well, my hair will look great, and these these baubles will be, you know. Come on, Polished. I actually was praying for a for a you know a, 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 a gay something, you know. Uh, but anyway, Maybe I don't know. Broadway kick. babysitters. People should look into it though if they need a babysitter, and you know, yes. it, it it can't be me because social <laughs> services will be called. But <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Anyway, what can we do? Um, now, darling, I'd like to start Virtual Halston. Oh, we're starting. Every week with a devotional hmm. or an affirmation. You know, this nice. is a difficult time and people need guidance. People need inspiration. They need aspirational situations. And I think I have it for them because, you know, again, we're in a painful period of, of, of our lives and people are very upset and nervous, whatever. You know what they need? They need the Bible. They need the Bible. And I have the Bible for you. This is the Bible. Joan Crawford's My Way of Life. And you know, I have to tell you, a lot of people in New York City are having to be forced to clean their own apartments. Mm. And that's very difficult for people. Sad. It's very sad, <laughs> me being one of them. Um, and I thought, I wonder if Joan has anything to say about this. Sure enough, she does. And I thought I'd share this with you because it might give you some inspiration and a little guidance. Hmm. Some working women do pay someone to help with the housework. And why shouldn't they? If they dread the thought of scrubbing the kitchen floor after a day in the office, I feel a great sense of accomplishment though when I get down on my own hands and knees and scrub my own floor when I've spent months without doing a motion picture or TV show and spend all my time at my desk every night I have a lot of surplus energy to use up Scrubbing for me is the greatest exercise in the world. I just scrub and scrub. It gives me rosy cheeks and I just have a ball. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that marvelous, Jen? That's our weekly affirmation. So for those of you, it, <laughs> for those of you who are being you know, kind of forced to, to clean your own homes. Just remember, 
the glamorous movie star Joan uh, Joan uh, Crawford did it, and and you could too. <laughs> I almost said Joan Rivers. I love all the Jones. I love Joan Collins, Joan Rivers, and Joan Crawford. I love the, the Jones. Jones. Yes. So um, that's our weekly devotional for, for, for this week. Well, it's a nice we'll way to kick week. this off. Uh, uh, well, this is kind of our Joan show because, you know, people have been very generous to me as a performer, and people love it when I do Joan because she is one, one of my big inspirations. Um, I mean, she was, you know, yeah, I mean, an alcoholic monster, but... Uh, you know, she was also a glamorous movie star. And, uh, mm. Well, Not people that. send you people send you these things, right? They do to and read or to show. Yes, and we would love it. Uh, we would love the people listening right now uh, to send me things, and I think they can send it right to Julie L. Halston <laughs> at gmail dot com. It's right on the screen. I it's love like show it. business. Lockner, that Ruby Lochner, I'm telling you. How does she, she do she it? Is, she's more efficient than anyone in the government. It's incredible. <laughs> um, but please, darlings, please feel free to send me whatever you would like to hear being read because you know I love to read things. And um, there is, uh, since we are doing kind of a Joan show, I thought we might bring up uh, a wonderful picture of Joan because, you know, in late in life, she um, was really a spokesperson for Pepsi. Because her her husband Alfred, I guess Alfred Steele, was a, 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 an executive. So can we bring up that Pepsi picture? I think Ruby might. There we are. <laughs> who who handles a Pepsi like that? <laughs> she it's it's a weapon, isn't it? And look at the bottom of the screen. There's the Bible. And there's the Bible. There's the Bible. Wait wait wait. There we go. I've got the book. She's got the book. I mean, it, it it's just incredible. But I just love that she's holding it as if it's just a weapon. <laughs> and, and can we also say, what the hell is that insane hat? <laughs> she <laughs> loved hat headgear. She loved insane. headgear. What, darling? I mean, she it's loved crazy. headgear. No, you know, it's true. And does anyone wear a hat anymore? Well, we'll hear Patty Lapone hopefully sing that in company soon enough. Yes. But anyway, so there we have Joan. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're if you're enjoying the show, feel free to tip us. There we go. I'm saying it again and again and again. Money is going to the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. Can I just get serious for a minute? Please. There are people in the Broadway community that have the disease of pulmonary fibrosis. And one of them, uh, a, a lot of people know, was my husband who... Um, ultimately did pass away from that, but also Jennifer Robin Arnold, who was our dresser for Vampire Lesbians of Sodom, had pul pulmonary fibrosis, and she died recently of COVID-19 because it was a terrible underlying condition. And she worked as a dresser for Phantom of the Opera for many, many years. She was just an, an incredible gal. So please, please feel free to give us some tips. We'd love to be able to send money to the pulmonary fibrosis. Bank. Julie, you've done such incredible work raising money for them. Uh, these beautiful benefits started at Birdland and then you they've gotten so big. They're at the Supper Club now. And yes, yes, big yes. star studded affairs. You've yes, raised a lot, yes. a lot, a lot of money. We've actually raised millions now. Uh, and uh, this year we actually honored Daryl Roth, the great Daryl Roth, and Bernadette Peters went into the audience and was singing, and she, people were amazed. You know, Bernadette Peters still looks 30. What um, is that? Yeah, well, I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't, but I need whoever's, whatever's going on there, whatever's going on there, I want it, want it, want it. Um, and she's also just the greatest star in the world. Well, you did Gypsy with her. I did Gypsy with her. And I got to tell you, the the my final performance, because I left Gypsy actually a little earlier than some of the other cast members to do um, 20th Century with Anne Heche and Alec Baldwin. And that's a whole nother show. Um, uh, she actually allowed me to take the final bow. I mean, what? Bernadette Peters, what are you doing? You're Bernadette Peters. She's the most generous, lovely person in the world. I just, I, I take a bullet for her. Well, I have a surprise. Julie, Bernadette, come in here. Yeah, yeah, right. Come, <laughs> come here, Bernadette Sorry. Peters. Sorry. No, I just, I love her so much. Now, let me, let me say 
Jim, you found this, and I just think it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Uh, again, because it is our Joan show. Can yeah. we bring this up, Ruby? Bring it up. Wigs a go go. Oh, <laughs> oh. No, Jim, look at this. You found it. That Ruby. it's like it's like the size of a golf bag. What in the hell? <laughs> what? That's a studio it's apartment. On first of all. There, I feel like she's like, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, the nutcracker suite when the kids come from <laughs> uh, under the skirt. There are children under that wig or, or babies or Hers. something. <laughs> of course. It's terrifying. RuPaul is very nervous. Jealous. Very nervous. Jealous. It's Absolutely. Unbelievable. No, it's But so read fantastic. it. Read some of it because the copy is The copy is haunting. fantastic. This took place in the 60s. And you know, I, I was a child in the 60s, but you know, I, I loved a go-go boot. I loved the whole expression, a go-go. <laughs> you know, I, I guess it was a go-go time. So Sears, first of all, I love that it's Sears because <laughs> Sears doesn't even exist anymore, I don't think. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday only, Sears presents Wigs a Go-Go. <laughs> and this is what I love. I'm gonna read it from my copy. For the glamour treat of the year, come to Sears Fashion Wig Salon. Because, you know, when I want a wig, I'm going to go to <laughs> Sears. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to buy a refrigerator, <laughs> a dishwasher. Tires. Tires. And a, and a wig. And a wig that looks like that. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do when I go to Sears. Yes, you could see yourself as an exciting blonde, a ravishing redhead, or an exotic brunette. Because, you know, when I think of brunettes, I think exotic. Don't you? And yeah. then it says, reg, reg, register for drawings. <laughs> drawings. <laughs> register for the drawings. Early American recipe volumes. Because, again, that's what you want when you register. You want some recipes. And when you think of Joan. And when you think of Joan. Early American. Exactly, it's valued at $15. And <laughs> then the winner is going to meet Joan Crawford, the Oscar-winning star of stage, screen, and television. She'll be here to give one lucky lady a free going over. <laughs> I bet. Imagine you in the hands of Joan Crawford. It's saying that. I mean, really, it's saying that. Imagine you in the hands of Joan Crawford. Go glamorous in a Sears fashion wig, and there's giving out free Pepsis and Fritos. <laughs> of course. And Fritos. Free Pepsis and Fritos. Do you know, I wish I would, I, I would kill to, be, to have been there. And I want to meet, and maybe she's still alive. I want to meet the woman who won. I know, who got the going over. Who got to get the, she, who got the going over <laughs> by Joan. I wonder if she's dead. Because that's what a going over by Joan means. She'd be dead. Um, but she's no, a very, yeah. she has scoliosis from the wig. She, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no neck. No neck. No, no neck, if, Betty. If that woman, I mean, we have to, we may have to try, try to track her down. Oh, let's do that. that let's do I'll that. I'll let you do that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she lives in Nashville. You never we know. We don't know. We don't, don't know. know. Yeah. No, but that's you have, oh, but you have this great clip. This Are you going to do that right now? Oh no, yes. you're doing uh, that with with you're doing that with Mario. I think we're going to do it with Mario because yeah, he needs Arnie to be Burton, involved in this. The great Arnie Burton, the uh, the actor and um, and uh, wonderful friend of mine, he was the one who told me about this wonderful movie. Oh, okay, uh, good. Yes, so I think it might be time to bring our guest on. Absolutely. What? Now listen, guys, you know him from so many things: Sex in the City, The View. Um, his own show, Broadway, Laugh For, just he's done stand up for years. He had his own uh, Steam Pipe Alley, his own uh, children's show, which was the most adult children's show in the history of children's shows. My own stepdaughters were on that show. Um, I love this man very, very much, not only as a human being, 
but as a, a talent and a comic. I've known him for years. I admire him. I adore him. And he just makes me laugh. And boy, do we need to laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Mario Cantone. Where's the audience? Darling. Where's the applause? <laughs> Are you having a good time? I'm having a magnificent time. Are you having an adult beverage? I'm, I'm having, uh, no, I'm not having an adult beverage yet. I wait till seven. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, that's seven. good. I don't. I know. Anyway. No, you don't. I know you don't. But that's okay. I just wait till seven. Who gives a shit? You know? Yeah. Look what who, I'm gives, doing who, myself. Who, who gives a damn? Now, Mario, yeah. first of all, darling, I'm so thrilled that you're my first guest because you're. I love that I'm your first guest. I, you and I love you so much. I can't tell you. I love you too. I, I you will. Know. We've known each other a long, long time. Yes, we have. We yes, certainly we have. have. And I think we look good. I think we look good. You look really good. And you know, you were saying Bernadette Peters looks really good. You know why? She's Sicilian, like us. Thank you. That's right. Thank the you. The saddle. Yes, it's well, that. Well, and Bernadette's cover. She's the, in the saddle. And do people know her? Her real name is Lazaro. It's Bernadette, last, it's last. her last name. But see, I'm saying DeSetto because her sister was Donna, right? The casting person. Do you remember her? Yes, Donna DeSetto. Her, yeah, her, her I love sister. Donna. Yeah, yeah. Both gorgeous, beautiful women. So what was Bernadette's real last name? Was it DeSetto or Lazaro? Lazaro. Lazaro. <laughs> yes. Then where's DeSetto? Did Donna marry uh, an, she married. Friend? She married. She married an Italian. Yes, yes. Foolish girl. I'm Polish telling girl. you, these girls know. They're wonderful, and they're both so beautiful and, and, and talented and just wonderful people. Now, Mario, tell us what you've been doing a little bit during the pandemic. Oh, okay. shooting heroin, smoking pot, <laughs> drinking a lot of tequila, banging hookers, you know, that kind of thing. That kind of thing. You know, um, I get it. You know, I've been with Jerry Dixon, my husband. He got home from, he, you know, he runs a theater and. Seattle, the, the Village Theater, and he, uh, I was there actually for a month at the Fifth Avenue Theater doing an out-of-town tryout of a new musical called Bliss, and boy, do I love Seattle. <laughs> How much coffee can you drink? First of all, it's donuts, coffee, crazy fucking mentally ill people, <laughs> and the homeless people are aggressive, they flail at you. I don't give a fuck. I say this everywhere. Come get me, Seattle, because I'll tell they look at you crazy. They look at you like you're nuts when you like jaywalk. Meanwhile, like what about the crazy bitch like in front of me and this right, and at, the over here. Market, at the public market? Uh, I I I can't. I don't I no. I'm I don't care if I ever go back. But uh, you know, but let me let me ask you though, honey, because you did a a, a musical that is scheduled for Broadway. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, and yeah. Um, called Bliss. Can yep. you tell us a little bit about Bliss? It's a, it, well, you know, you know me. I never go out of town to do shit because I don't like it. Right. I like being home. I'm a recluse, which is why this quarantine is not so tough on me because right. I'm okay. You're having um, a good pandemic. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm having a great <laughs> pandemic. Um, knock wood. I'm lucky. You know, so uh, it's 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 a fairy tale spin, and I'm the kind of the the villain. The Disney villain in it. It's it's a great score by Tyler Beatty and Emma Lively. First time is the brilliant, and directed by Cheryl Keller. And it's a really great, fun, wonderful musical. And you know, it was Cheryl. It was the score. It was the part that they built on me. And my husband was in Seattle running a theater, so I was like, "Well, you gotta okay. go because okay, if you I'll say no, yeah. you know, they're gonna be like, well, why? Your husband's there. Do you hate him? They'll think I hate my <laughs> husband, and I don't want him to think that. So I went." Um, but, but we, you know, I, it was, it was, a, it was only a month and then, and then, and then it hit. It's a it's global pandemic. And then you know, it hit. It's, we it's were the last show I, there. We were the I, last show. I tell people this, that, you know, uh, and, and Mario, you knew him. I mean, I, I love the love of my life. My, my late husband, I love you, uh, Ralph Howard. Um, I did his show many times. Yes. I did get a, a, a wonderful sort of retro mic, kind of like what he had yes we have and, one of those jerry bought one of those too i love that you have one of yeah those. no i know but That's you know awesome. it's so interesting because uh i finally gotten to a point where i i thought you know ralph you know i i need to get out in the world again and i i thought you know it'd be kind of nice to go to dinner you know maybe with a man or whatever because it's been a while now and 
global pandemic. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. Global. You know, it's well, like you, know what? you can't have a date in New York, London, Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia. No, you, you can't. Well, I was saying the same thing. Like after 9-11, I was like, just when I was coming out of my depression, I was just coming out of it. Yeah. Towers yeah. fall. Oh, yeah. you know, let me ask you this because Cheryl Caller, who was I your friend, I would, this, is someone I would, I'm actually working with on right now on a writing project, and I love her to pieces. She's great. I didn't know this. You didn't know you were roommates at one time. Yeah, in college, and and yeah, well, we were roommates here in New York, and we went to college together. Uh, she majored in directing at Emerson College, and she actually directed a production of Elizabeth Suedo's Runaways that she dramaturgically restructured brilliantly. She's a very good dramaturg. She's brilliant. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, and it was a student-directed musical production. It was so good that they moved to downtown Boston in the theater district to a small theater for a month. And wow. Gina Gershon was in it. Amy Stiller was in it. Um, Marion Ross's daughter was in it. I forget her name. Forgive me. Um, yeah, it was, it was fascinating. It was, it was, yeah. So, and then, you know, she came here and, um, was that Elizabeth Suedos? Did yes, you Elizabeth Suedos. Yeah. Yep. I just yep. remember she had a lot of hair. She did. It was very long. It was very long. Very she had long. a lot of hair. That yeah. was the, that was the look at that time. It was the look. It was that very, Elizabeth Suedo's it was, hair. She was a child of the '60s. It was that whole yes, look. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. You know, I was more of the wigs a go go person. You certainly were. Yeah. And, and, and Liz Suedo's was kind of looked like an extra in the movie Hair. Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah. But this is what I found out from Cheryl Caller, your wonderful friend and director, is that at one point you were having issues with a with a boyfriend you were was seeing and oh, yeah. she ended up sleeping in the bathtub yeah she did yeah she did one time i think yeah yeah i think she did one time she 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 yeah that was my first boyfriend that was eight years that was an eight-year relationship i met him in college and we moved uh to uh you know actually i moved to la first and they moved in together in new york and well, then she wasn't and sleeping then, in the bathtub then no she wasn't sleeping in the bathtub then but she wasn't sleeping. She slept in the bathroom for me. She didn't really sleep in the bathtub. She's exaggerating. <laughs> That's what she told me. I love her to death, but she's exaggerating. Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> Zoom. Um, uh, so, yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well, but, that's fantastic. I love now, it. Mario, tell me, though, um, quickly, because apparently we're already almost out of time. Um, See you later. All right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. We'll Because you have to have your cocktail hour. Um is there anything that you would really love to be uh, once we come out of this global pandemic? We're not going anywhere until there's a vaccine. I got news for everybody. I to bring it down, but yeah. everyone's like, when you come, when are you playing in Chicago? When there's a vaccine? Yeah, um, yeah. I, what, but what, is there anything, anything I want to do? Would love to be doing, or is there any? Thing that you you're you're are you writing something new? No, or? Julie, don't push me. Um, <laughs> no, but I have I have a new you know I have a new one man show that I I've done at the Carlisle and I want to do it on Broadway. But then I question and go, do you really want to do it on Broadway? You're 90 years old. It's exhausting. <laughs> I mean, I just did this run of Bliss and it was really it was exhausting. It was exhausting. Well, I but mean, you I, know what, Mario? I found because you know I was just in Tootsie on Broadway. I know. Uh, playing Rita Marshall, and uh, first of all, I love that you came three times. I sure did. I loved it. Uh, it was. I so loved great. Her. I saw it three times. Yeah, it was underappreciated. Master class of comedy. The writing was great. The book was Bless magnificent. You. The score was great. You were phenomenal. Everybody was phenomenal. Yeah, it was, it a was great show. It was the greatest, I think, group of um, ensemble of uh, uh, comedy players. Amazing. It was amazing. John Bellman and Santino oh. and Sarah, everyone, everyone. Anyway, enough about that. It was but I was well, saying with this I, new virtual world. I don't know I'm what I want to do. Exhausted. I'd rather just go on stage and do eight a week. I would do that. You know, I would do, I would do that. I, I wouldn't mind a series. I wouldn't mind, you know, I do, you know, I got, but the good thing is this, I mean, March 31st and March, I keep saying March, May 31st is the season premiere of, um, of Match Game. So I'm on that. Um, I love the game show stuff. You know, it's very classic, and I love doing. It. I won't do a reality show, but I'll do the game shows. Um, and and I, I, to tell the truth, I got it to tell the truth. I love doing that with Rita oh Moreno, my God, this is Rita so Moreno, and, and 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 Raven Simone, and 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 Dion Cole, who's so brilliant. Raven's a good friend, and that was 
and Anthony Anderson. That was really fun, and they threw us some crazy stuff. That's on in June, and I got a, a the Good Fight. I did a, an episode of the Good Fight that's coming on in a few weeks. So, I you know I did some stuff right up till it happened, and then you know. No, but it's you know fantastic. what? I'll be all right. Well, what am I going to do? I'm cooking every night with my husband. We, we get along great. He came home March 14th. He came right home. He came That's home. Great. He packed his shit up and he came home. He's still working for the theater. He's doing everything via Zoom. But, you know, what do you, let me ask you, when do you think Broadway's coming back? Oh, a year from now. Yeah, I say, I say, I say fall of 21. I say possibly spring of 21, we might have a few little things like some maybe off-Broadway, maybe social distancing something, maybe something in the park. Maybe. But I'd maybe. say a good year, a good year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. By the I, way, I just want to remind people, don't you love Mario Tan Cantone? Why don't you tip, tip us tip. so that we can tip, 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 so that we can give some money to the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. I love doing care. that benefit for you. That no, was, it's, that and was a you great time. Killed. It was a great time. I'll never forget that night. That you night forget. when you performed at Broadway Bells for PFF, people still come up to me literally on the street and say, you got to have Mario Cantone back again. It, and it these are very corporate people. These are people you think, oh my God. You know they're Republicans or something. I don't know. They begged me to have you back, so we'll yeah, have. I'm, I'm, I'm big with some of the Republicans. I don't know what it is, but I'll tell you. You know, it's it's always the it's always the benefits that you do for free that you, you kill at, and it's the ones the corporate things that I'll go do for like thousands and thousands of dollars, and I bomb. Uh, darling, that's the way it is. Oh, it's the I way it is. That the same way I've done it. I've I've had so many times where they go, and here's a check for five to ten thousand yeah. dollars. Oh. No one heard a word I said. Oh, no, of course. oh yeah. They're horrible. Corporate yeah. gigs are terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've turned some down. Even the money. I'm like, I, I can't. I, I haven't got time for the pain. <laughs> well, now, darlings, I think I think our show is actually over. It's over? I think it's over. Can it's only a half hour? Can we, bring, can we bring Jim Caruso back? I, th I thought you'd be doing an hour. You'd tell no, me no. a half hour. Give me an hour. It's not. You still have the clip to show, Julie. Show oh, the clip. Let's show the clip. Well, you know yes. what was on today, too? The Star, which is kind yes. of based on Joan Crawford. Yes. With Davis and, and, and Sterling Hayden, who was so hot. I know. What was, was that? So hot. And he's so good beautiful looking. Beautiful in that. He like was thin and tan and he's gorgeous. Oh, my you God. Know, he was, he was Johnny slept. Guitar. He Lots was Johnny Guitar, too. Speaking of yeah, Joe Crawford. A lot of people slept with I think, did Barbara Stanwyck sleep with him? People don't know who Barbara Stanwyck is. Let's show them. Oh, yes, they do. Uh, Kiss me on the mouth. Follow the mouth. <laughs> Kiss me on the mouth. Remember her in the thorn boards? I love you, Father Ralph. Now, <laughs> kiss me on the mouth like a lover. Remember her? I yeah. love Barbara Stanwyck. That's a really good impression. No, well, I only do them at the end. I can't do her younger. I wish I could. I hope people go to YouTube and go to the Thornbirds because what Mario is doing is <laughs> classic. So can we actually show the clip? Yeah, show the clip. Yeah. It <laughs> you little tramp. Throwing yourself at him, chasing him. I don't even know him. Get out of here. You're a liar. I heard you on the telephone. Now get out of here. <laughs> That's the best thing ever. Get out of here. First you of all, little tramp. First of all, how about the fact that I'm wearing the same kind of... <laughs> of course you are. Because I'm you're wearing... Julie Halston. Because I'm Julie Halston. I love that she's in the bushes with costume jewelry like this like this and say get out of here oh, when she slams the door to the car at one point later she, it's she's fantastic. really nice to her for a second then she goes now get out of here it's, it's a bizarre <laughs> turn of emotion when she slams the car but it's like the girl we get to see her crass true personality i think and that because oh, she's tough she's in this tough. but that fake joan voice you don't oh, hear yeah. any of that it's just nope. just nasty it, it's Nasty ass. It all comes Ooh. from the gut, and that's John. That's John Ireland who played her. her that's right. That's right. And the person who was murdered was Joyce Meadows. That's right. <laughs> oh my god! Of course it was. That's so bizarre. And John Ireland was in Queen Bee, also, which I loved. Did you ever see Queen Bee? Oh. I don't know Queen Bee. Queen Bee's good. All she's right, like I'll her, look that one up. Oh, it's good because she's like a, you know, a Type A crazy controlling <laughs> matriarch of this 
kind of home and oh, oh named yeah. Amy. I don't know named what you're Amy. talking about. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I think I don't think I don't I don't know what her name was in Queen Bee. I forget. It's you know, it's always like Louise or Vienna. I'm Louise. I love possessed as one of my favorite ones. <laughs> With oh, Van Heflin. Yeah. If you notice at the end when she shoots Van Heflin, she shoots him in the balls. She <laughs> kind of like does that. <laughs> I'll and find I you, Dave. You. That opening shot where she's like dazed and looking for David. And she's like, David. And the bus pulls up and the door opens. She goes, is David on this bus? <laughs> and it's like, no. And the door goes. And she's like, where's David? What's the matter, lady? Where are you going? I'm looking for David. That's all <laughs> she says. I can't. He just, he's killing me. You're killing me. Now, wait, we have one more little thing. What it's is a it? It's a picture of, of you, me, oh. during a Easter bonnet, I believe, during Broadway Cares Equity. I think I've Friday. seen this picture, but I may not have. Is it, Yay! Oh, I've not seen that picture. I think there's there, also a picture of me and you backstage with Hugh Jackman. Yes. Too. Yes, that's another picture I have. But first of all, I love that you're the star. I'm in a beautiful Reem Acra gown, although I think I look very fat. You look I, great. I know, I look fat. You um, look great. But how about the fact that Bernadette Peters is sort of like off to the side? She's I, kind of background. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, when we show up, Bernadette, just she goes to the side. Just, she's kind. She she's gracious. She, she gives knows. It up to you. She understands. She knows. She's she like, knows. oh, the, the funny people are here. I've already sang, you know, send in the clowns. <laughs> Here are the clowns. You know, her her late husband, may he rest in peace, who was my a wonderful guy, he he got my brother his first job in New York. Like, oh. we knew him before she did. And then, so, like, my brother really knew him well. Michael, he right? Financial job? Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. he yeah. was in the financial world. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. And he was such, he was a strapping beautiful when they met oh, like they met on like this a little like uh, uh, on broadway in a little on a little cement island walking their dogs and they met and that was it uh, i know i used to see them in the park sometimes like you know because they were they're both so fit and so beautiful yeah. and oh my i god. must say they were a hot couple beautiful gorgeous beautiful. oh my god yeah 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 Absolutely. no and don't you love to see a beautiful couple i, I do yes. gay I do. straight whatever trans whatever sit <laughs> <laughs> Any kind of hot couple. Whatever. Two, I don't, two Siberian huskies. I'm good with that too. <laughs> I'm I'm trying so hard to be woke and 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 uh, let me tell you something. Fuck that. I'm asleep. How about that? I this, this is my other here's my other schedule, bitches. I'll tell you this. I intermittent fast, you know, so I don't eat till two and then I eat at like eight or nine, and then I'm done. I still gain weight. I lost so much weight during Bliss, I came back, put it all on. But my, I, I don't get out of bed till like one o'clock. Then I make breakfast for Jerry. We eat it too. And then he goes on his Zoom meetings. He's on meetings all day with this. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, you know, you know, watching Turner classic movies. I was watching the star today with the, uh, with Betty Davis and uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jim. And you, you don't eat him. I, oh, I eat, I eat. And I, and I, I haven't, I haven't had a drink for the last two days, but all bets are off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I have to say, this was really fun. This was really Julie, fun. You it need was an a hour. Blast. A half hour is bullshit. You need an hour. Well, it's already thirty eight minutes. Well, this is. I have to say, I hope Whoa. everyone. This has got to be at least a long hour. Bunny Bixler. I Bunny think Bixler you're right. Says, what does she hour. say? She Bunny says, Bixler says this, this has got, got to be an hour. An hour long at least. What's it going to cost? Another three cents? Come on. What's the big deal? Well, no, it's I not know, like there's I... a network breathing down our necks no or kidding. anything. We can That's do as true. long as we well, want. You know what? Since we're here and we're talking, can we please, once again, accept some tips? Please, please, bing, please, bing, bing, please, bing, please bing. be generous. They can all be sent to Venmo. Apparently, the Venmo is for, for the younger folk, and the <laughs> PayPal seem to be for a little bit of the, the older people. Uh, they have the PayPal. So <laughs> yeah, there the they Venmo, are. The Venmos are more annoying. And when you use the Venmo, by the way, put on your privacy setting because oh, everyone know. knows who you're giving money to. It's like, this isn't a, <laughs> oh, this I isn't know. a fucking social media thing. What do you, this isn't like a, a, a conference I, Zoom call. Are you serious? You gotta know <laughs> that I'm paying my drug dealer for some pot. What's, what's wrong with them? Venmo. I, they should have I know, I've seen, shut off automatically. I've seen so many people being paid for dog sitting and oh, cat sitting and I know. dog walking and- Really? And, you know, anyway, by the way, you know who just wrote in? She wants an hour. The great Alice Ripley. 
Oh, oh, I love Alice Ripley. Love Alice, Alice Ripley. Ripley. A shout out to Alice Ripley. Who I heard was Tony Winter next to normal. She, she just did Sunset Boulevard uh, like last year at the at, at, in Boston, and she played Norma Desmond, and she was the original. Um, who who, who right. was the role? Nancy Olsen played it in the movie. Um, the girl. The soubrette. Yeah, you know. Yeah. The one that was in love with William Holden. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, 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 yes. Oh, she came full circle. Okay. Hello, Alice. I will never leave you. Um, I'm so excited that people really I, like the idea of an hour. That's yeah, really great. Do it I now. think it's also because we have so such an amazing guest. I mean, yeah, come on. I mean, I could go on singing <laughs> till the cows come home. Billy Street City on two hours. <laughs> well, you know, you're just marvelous. Yeah, you're marvelous. Just, you're you're really marvelous. Really and really you know, marvelous. both of both of us actually, well, all three of us know Liza Minnelli. And we could tell so yes. many stories. Yes, and do. you know, there, there's a segment that I'm gonna be working on called Close Encounters of the Celebrity Kind. <laughs> because you know, I love to name drop. I think you should script them and we should act them out. Oh, that would be a great idea. I'll, I'll, yeah, we should do that. Yeah, That's because you really and I can tell the story and we can act this out, Mario. The night I, we went to the very first farewell tour of Barbra Streisand's with Liza Minnelli. And let me tell you, it was one for the ages. I'm just going to give people a little, a little taste or a little teaser. Not only were we at the Barbara Streisand first farewell tour because there's been so many of them now. It's kind of like, Barbara, farewell! You know, but no, apparently not. But anyway, this was the very first one. And we went with Liza and we met Liza at the will call. First of all, to meet Liza Minnelli at the will call is one of the funniest things I've ever done in my life. And then this is again, a little teaser. All I can tell you is that Richard Simmons came on to my husband. Of course he did. And I was like, Richard, are you flirting with my <laughs> husband? This is the gayest night of my life. I'm at the well. Barbra Streisand concert <laughs> with Liza Minnelli and Richard Simmons is coming on to my husband. And Donna Karen was searching for safety pins. It was the gayest <laughs> night of my life. You know, Julie, we'll call. We'll the call. name of my first boyfriend who was a chorus boy will in call. some ways are for sleeping will I, call he's a terrific met, kid i don't know where he is now <laughs> we met at the will call and yeah, there will was with me Mr. people call. clustered around us and people literally their heads were imploding they were going <laughs> liza 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 and people were screaming and davening and crying and I mean, it was just crazy. We walked into Madison Square Garden. We were in the you know, front row. In the front row. And I, I just remember um, my husband, you know, who was, who was the straightest man in the world, kind of looking around and he said, why are people pointing at us? I said, because you've just walked into Madison Square Garden with Liza Minnelli. And people are crying. He couldn't believe it. It was so fantastic. And then to have Richard Simmons come on to you. That's hilarious. Yikes. And he was wearing a red glitter jumpsuit. It was just brilliant. You couldn't have, you couldn't have scripted it. But, but you that's, know what? That's the night he sent a diamond ring back to her, which she refused because yes. she was evidently frightened by him. Well, no, he was lying on the floor crying yes. hysterically. And I jumped over him because I didn't know what was on the floor. And I picked him up at one point because he was weeping so copiously. <laughs> and I finally picked him up. And you know, when you know, you, you don't know Rich, I didn't know Richard Simmons, but when you, when you deal with celebrities, sometimes you feel like you know them. And he, I just, I picked him up and I said, Richard, what is the matter with you? And he said, I had a doll made of her and I'm sent back a ring and she's refused it. And he fell into my arms. He fell into my arms, Richard Simmons, in a red glitter jumpsuit, which was horrifying. And then he looked at Ralph and he said, you're very attractive. Are you with her? You are very attractive. And that's when I said, are you coming on to my husband, Richard Simmons? 
And Liza was in the bathroom, in the public bathroom, because they wouldn't let her go to Barbara Streisand's personal toilet. Well, <laughs> we're all the public at Madison Square Garden. That's right. No, it was really. I, I used to do. I used to do Richard Simmons on Steam Pipe Alley all the time. We also well, always put him in like situations like he was. We made him Annie Wilkes in Misery, and he kidnapped Famous Amos and strapped him to the bed. And every time Famous Amos, who my husband played, Jerry played, said nutmeg, he was like, "You said nutmeg. Stop saying that word." And he made him stretch with the oldies, and oh yeah, sick. We have to. This is. We will do a segment called Close Encounters. Yeah, I'm that's a good idea. Pretty kind. You're drunk. Because I have so many. I'm just going to tell my other, because we, we still have some minutes. People want an hour there. They're apparently with Yeah, keep going. Here's my 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 James Earl Jones story. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I love James Earl Jones so much. And we did You Can't Take It With You together. And I was in the second act playing the drunk. Playing the drunk. When you Katie went up Wilson. those stairs was hilarious. Oh, bless you so much. Where that was I a great production, too. And I would bring James down for the second act we would you know while the people were still filtering in from intermission and i would walk him and i would hold his hand and i would place him in the in the chair that's where he stood you know was and uh he was like oh miss holston you have you have beautiful hands you have beautiful hands beautiful long slender fingers and big long beautiful hands and i said well, you know, James, you know what they say about a woman with big hands. And he went, big pussy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard. Big pussy. Wow. James Earl Jones. I, I was laughing so hard that I had to be under a blanket after that. And I could not stop laughing. So I bet. seeing Gay Wellington, like, just shaking under the blanket. I couldn't get past it. It was... And I, to have James Earl Jones say that to you, I'll remember it to the day oh, I die. <laughs> Big pussy. <laughs> Isn't that great? I'm <laughs> very honored. Darth <laughs> Vader said big pussy to you. Yeah. But, I mean, is there a, is there a celebrity, uh, Mario, that you uh, were ever tongue-tied around or got very nervous around or were so intimidated by? No. Yeah. Um, Sally Fields. And she can't really? stand me. She can't stand me. She looks at me like I'm fucking nuts. Yeah, I, I'm very intimidated by her. And she and she also doesn't give me the vibe that she likes me at all. So I just kind of try to be nice and you overdo it. And I didn't send a fucking ring backstage to her, you know, but uh, you know, or you know, or order a Sally Field Barbie doll and send it to her. But I, you know, I try with her. She yeah, she's 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 yeah. It, it's a little weird. Um what were the circumstances that you I met? I just met her a couple. I, I met her once at, I met her at the improv years ago. I met her at the view. Um, and then I met her after um, um, Glass Menagerie. Glass mm. Menagerie. Yeah. Which you know Joe great. Mantello. And I love Joe. Yeah. Three, three, my, my three time director. I love him very yes. much. No, he's, really he's kind of a genius. Can he's we brilliant. He really yeah. is. But I think, I, I, I'm trying to think of someone that I was like really freaked out by. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've had. Uh, yeah, I, no. Walt okay. is dead, so um, I don't know. No, there is. I don't. I, I'll okay. remember it after we're off the fucking. Right, day. right. And Jim, you one of the favorite uh, legends that you got rather close to was Kay Thompson. The one yes, Kay Thompson. Yeah, who, I was tongue tied with her for quite a while. Okay. Because Liza had built her up. Uh, Kay Thompson was Liza's godmother. And um, also Judy Garland's vocal coach and Frank Sinatra's vocal coach. And, you know. And Andy Williams' girlfriend. Andy, yes, the yes, for a minute. Uh, and wrote Eloise and was in Funny Face, my favorite movie. Uh, so I was nervous around her, but she took a liking to me because I reminded her of one of her friends at MGM. So I, I kind of learned that the less you said around her, the better. And then she would just tell stories. People that would come in and know too much and have too much information, she would clam up. So I just kind of sat around and with my mouth shut and then she just opened up. That, but Streisand was very weird to meet. To me. Well, I met her once. I met Streisand once too. She was, but she was very nice. 
But she, but she was very nice, very she polite. Does. But it's, very you polite. Know, it's Barbara Streisand. She, she, and I, 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 they introduced me. She was like, Mario, and he was on Sex and the City. She was like, oh, you know. Right. And that was right. it, you know. But she yeah. was nice, you know. Right. It, I kind of got that, too. I, she said, it's nice to meet you. And I said, well, we actually met backstage with Liza Manley. She said, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. I'm not well, trying to impress you. I'm just yeah. telling you. Yeah. The, the <laughs> night I met her was the night, Jim, that we went to that, that concert. And I was backstage with, uh, uh, yes, you, Billy, Liza, um, Peter Jennings, Madeline yeah. Albright, um, and Fran Drescher. And I thought, what the hell am I doing here? And at right. that point, my lashes were falling off. And I, I sort of had a Calder mobile in my head, you know, because I had like Dynell wigs and they were kind of falling. I started looking like Sylvia Miles or something. It was really sad. Um, so I just said, nice to meet you. And I went home and I, I yeah, I didn't need to. Madeline Kahn was someone that I was, mm. when I, I worked with her in a workshop of Dear World that Scott Ellis directed. And I was just, I, and I, but she was nice. And then we got very friendly and I, I did, it was Dear World, Cheetah Rivera, Michael C. Hall, Alfred Molina, uh, Audra McDonald. I wanted to be in this room so bad, I played oh. the deaf mute. <laughs> it's the truth. I played, I, I wow. signed, because, you know, my sister taught the deaf, so I knew, knew right. some sign. But I, she told me she was from, she goes, I said, where are you from originally? She goes, it's a little town in Massachusetts. You don't know, you don't, never heard of it. I said, I'm from Massachusetts. She goes, you, you won't know it. I, what? Revere, I went, Revere? My husband, my cousin was killed in Revere. Shot down dead in his house. Wow. So, yeah, well, that's true. That's a whole other story. But anyway, um, yeah, I knew Revere Beach. And then she said she moved to New York with her mother when she was four. And we got very, but, but this is the thing is when you're around someone like that, or even if you're around someone like Morgan Fairchild, who I worked with once, who's worked with all the greats in the 70s and TV movies, we would had a conversation about ask questions. Listen to them. Don't throw your information out. Ask questions about what was it like to work with this one. I would sit at Lauren McCall's feet and I would ask her questions. I would ask her questions. That's what you do. I remember Shirley MacLaine did that movie in, in her shoes with Tony Collette and, yes. and, yeah. uh, and Cameron Diaz. She was quoted in the Times as saying, they, they didn't even ask me any questions. If I was working with me, she said, I would ask me questions. She goes, all Tony Collette was quiet and it's all Cameron Diaz talked about was dodging the paparazzi with Justin Timberland. Oh. But it's true. It's yeah. like, and, and Jane Fonda said it at her AFI award and it's the truth. She said, you know what? The only one that I ever really worked with when they were younger was Meryl Streep and she was the only one, not the only one she ever worked with when she was younger. She said she was the only one of the young people that I worked with that was kind of my junior that asked questions. She took interest. She said, let me just say, it is better to be interested than interesting. And I, that's absolutely the right. Year. It's true. Ask questions. You work with, but, and, and I just find that the younger folk, I'm sorry to sound like grandpa, they don't give a fuck about history. They don't care about, they don't care about that history or even gay history, straight history, show business history, whatever. They, they don't care. They don't give a fuck. And the, and the fact is, <laughs> and wear a mask. If you want to be in show business, no, the references. It's important. They don't. It's really important. Look, I just work with this very young cast in Bliss, and they were very lovely people. But I'll tell you, I throw out a bit in the middle of rehearsal. No one knew what the fuck I was doing. It's like, wow. They didn't know who was. And you're in show business. I don't care how young you are. They don't know the references, and that's the difference. And that happened in a jump of 10 years. And that's but not don't you time. think there will always be kids that that do understand the references like yes. we did. Like well, I was obsessed this, with Mae well, West, well, well, but there I, will always be dumb kids. <laughs> no, but I'm telling you, it's more and more because I've, mm. I've, I've done the experiment, I feel. Yeah. It's more yeah. and more. I do remember there, during Hairspray, oh. when I was doing Hairspray, one thing I used to love was um, a lot of the, uh, and I would say, you know, they were the, the, the uh, ensemble boys mainly. They used to come into my uh, dressing room and they would say, you know, Tell us about the eighties, um, which, <laughs> which is, nice. but you know what? They learned about the AIDS epidemic because that was no, the eighties. Well, that was the eighties and, that, and, that's and, they, and, know and about. they needed to know that they needed to know. So anyway, you know, it's just, but, it's, 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 for me, it's upsetting. It's like, okay, you need to, you need to know. And I would give these kids lists of movies and some of them would ask, tell me some movies to see, you know, 
and there were a gr bunch of talented kids and good kids. Oh yeah, they're all. I, I had a, no, they're not all good kids. <laughs> but um, I'll just wipe that off the board. Oh, okay. Hall, so here's the eraser. Uh, but <laughs> some of them are. And but I I say you got to take interest in it. Yes. It's, yes. You know, by the way, if you're enjoying this, and, and I guess now, I don't know, what, what, what are we, we're almost I, done with an hour. It's 11 o'clock, Julie. I, I mean, went from funny to fun to raging. I was going to say, now we're at the AIDS epidemic. <laughs> terrifying. And terrifying. let me just say this to all the youngins, wear a mask. No, wear yeah, a mask. yeah, wear a mask. Oh, wear some no, gloves, one's wearing, please. no one's wearing a mask in Chelsea. So, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Doggers. Yeah. Um, and I don't like to be told, though, every five minutes how old I am. Please. Um, you know, they keep saying, if you're this age, you could yeah, be vulnerable. Please don't remind don't me. Tell um, yeah, and I'm concerned about my Botox. But that's a whole other thing because I'm deeply shallow. However, you good, Julie. Please, you don't look thank you. Thank you. It's lighting. Um, please, <laughs> please put some money in that tip jar. We need ting, ting. to pay for this wonderful platform, this wonderful show. But it's also it's going to the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. And it's my wonderful charity that is helping people all across the United States uh, live, the caregivers as well as the patients. I am so delighted. I can't tell you, this was so much more fun. I was a wreck. I was a wreck. No, it was fun. And, and it, but Julie, it. it's good. Julie, wait, do you know who we have to thank uh, for helping us out as the Bucks County Playhouse? Thank you, because they are going to be taking a clip from this and they're going to be putting it to their 1,600 subscribers for their variety show. And thank you. And if people should know about the Bucks County Playhouse, mm. uh, it's bcp.org. I have worked there. I also do something called Word of Mouth. I'm going to be on May 31st. Storytelling with Michaela Murphy and Ophira Eisenberg, you know, from NPR. We tell these wonderful stories. Um, Mike Albo, all these great storytellers. And uh, Bucks County Playhouse, Robin Goodman, Alex Frazier, they're great, great people. Please support that. My uh, husband did Equus us. there. Do you know that? What, darling? I, Jerry Dixon did Equus there years ago. There you go. I never played the Bucks County Playhouse, but my husband did Equus. He played Alan Strang, naked as a jaybird on that stage. Well, and we know how handsome your, your husband is. He's he is very good looking. But I, Bucks County's got the history of that place is amazing. Fantastic. It's just incredible. So, PCP.org, check them out. Thank you so much. And I'm just looking again. We want to thank you. This has been amazing. It was, Great. I love when you go over. Who knew? You didn't go over. It's an hour. That's it. Julie, there it you is. did okay. it. Yeah, it's and an hour please show. Feel free to give us Venmo money and PayPal money for the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. Thank you, Ruby Lochnar, BT Whitehill, Sam Rudy, Jim Caruso, Mario. You are the ultimate guest, and you oh, are the best I'm person glad. anyone could ever want. I'm glad I could bust your cherry on your virtual talk show. I love that. I love that. There's Thank you. And say hello to Jerry. I will. And, and, and right. I love you and very much. Jim, everybody. I love you. Thanks for doing this. was really you, fun. Mario. I had a great time. Thank All you. Right. Signing off, bitches. Bye, darling. I'm going to drink some tequila. See you next Friday at 5. Bring your yes. adult beverages.